My name is Sarah Matthews, and I am Communications Division Director for the Libertarian Party of Ohio, as well as Vice Chair of the Executive Committee for the Libertarian Party of Ohio. Um, basically, this first slide is going to look a lot like Chantel's. It does have a formal division for communications. Uh, if you don't have the division models, the same principles are going to apply. Um, Okay, our mission is to, basically you heard the same thing, our mission is to defend freedom and increase liberty of all Ohioans. We will do this by recruiting libertarian candidates for public office, educating the public about our principles for the membership and winning elections. Our purpose in the communications division is to field all LPO, Libertarian Party of Ohio communications vehicles, which is going to include things like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, email, newsletters, things of that nature. Also do news releases, speaking with the, the media, web updates to the front page of our state website, calendar events, which is also in conjunction with the field development division, and LPO statewide email announcements. Maintain and develop media contacts. That's a big one. Which I will speak more about that in a little bit. Uh, elements of the division. We've got our director, deputy director, which basically assists in, in my day-to-day -day functions, helps me with forming words for our email, for forming the, the subject of our, of our emails and, and helping out with the social media groups. Right now, we don't have a deputy director. I just stepped into this role, and I was the deputy director. Uh, so that's an important role to, to get filled. There's a lot that needs to be done in the communications division. Copy editing is also a big group. And also, anything that's not listed as either director or deputy director, these other things can be fielded by multiple people. In fact, we encourage it to be fielded by multiple people. We also have... News coverage, folks who know how to do press releases, that's a very important skill to have. Graphic design, and in, in today's day and age, it's so important to have an image that you can spread very quickly to people, multiple people, through multiple avenues, so that they can get the message quickly and want to share it. And social media expertise, which is along the same lines. All right, so with news releases, you want to make sure that they contain what's called clean copy. You want them to look consistent and look and feel, no grammatical or spelling errors. Uh, you you want to make sure that they cover all event coverage, announcements, or breaking news. So if there's something that happens over a weekend, you want to make sure that something goes out on Monday or Tuesday of the following week. It's going to go to media outlets influential people and organizations, political thought leaders. Every release may not go to every contact. Make sure that you are tailoring your releases to the avenues that will want to share your story. Include only one or two of your best photos as attachments with your news release. Faces are important. You want close pictures of people interacting with one another. Consider a service like MailChimp, that's what we use, to send out your email news releases. You can keep a list of your email contacts that you make through media contacts with newspapers, TV stations, radio stations. You can keep that all documented, shoot out an email, and it's all taken care of for you. Can you just say the last thing? MailChimp. MailChimp? Yes. MailChimp.com. And then once you've sent out the news release, uh, one responsibility of the communications division, at least in Ohio, is to make sure that that news release does get posted to the front page of the state party website. And there can, there can be few, you know, a few exceptions here and there to what gets posted or not, but most everything does. So just to give kind of a brief overview of how to structure a news release, you always want to make sure that they are in the third person and they should fit on one side of the page using 12 point font. 
So step one is you want to write a nut graph or one or two sentences that convey essential information. Exact time, place, date, proper names of a group or candidate, names of any notable people. Step two, you want to write a lead, which is a sentence that grabs the reader's attention. You know, you read a, a news article, they always have that sentence, or they should anyway, always have that sentence that kind of grabs you and makes you want to read some more. That's what that is. Step three, you want to add details and more paragraphs between one and three short sentences. Most important details first. Separate paragraphs with an empty line, no indents, like in college papers. Include quotes from your chair candidate or well-known member or your guest that you've been interviewing for the news release. Don't quote someone about time and place information. Use something with color or meaning. You, that stuff can get kind of tedious reading it over and over. You want to make sure that it's interesting for the readers. Step four is your boilerplate. That's a paragraph or two at the end that provides context to what you're talking about along with contact details. And step five, you want to write a headline. It's the same basic idea as the lead. It wants to grab the audience, but stick to the main point. This is a basic example of what a news release would look like. So you have your headline at the top, it's in bold, grabs the reader, and then you go down, you have your lead. One of the country's greatest political thinkers will be talking common sense about the current state of American politics to the audience this month. Drives them in and makes them want to get some more information. Then you have your nut graph. It gives all the details about the event, time, place, date. Then you have your quote. And finally, your boilerplate gives some more information. Working with the media, that's a fun one. Stay positive. Party strategy and mission should sell what we can do, not what others are doing wrong. Stick to the message. One topic at a time, too much and you will lose your audience. Keep it less than 500 words. Provide website links for more information to cut down on space. In order to develop those relationships with media contacts, you want to contact them directly. Email, phone calls. Usually phone calls work better than emails for that kind of thing. Build a working relationship with them so that you can call them up with a story and say, hey, I've got a hot, I've got a hot story for you on what we're doing. And they're like, oh, okay. They want to write a story for you. That's great. So you want to obtain that direct contact information for them. Find out what different media outlets want in their publications. Like I said before, you want to tailor that approach so you can provide what they're interested in to what they're going to publish. Get your message out that way. Once those liberty-friendly outlets are found, find where your message will be best favored. Send exclusives, more specific information to those people. And just develop that relationship some more. When speaking with media contacts via interviews, never lie. If you don't know the answer to something, tell them, I don't know, but I will get back to you. Get their contact information and make sure that you do follow up with them. Consider who is asking the question and then decide how to answer. Um, you have no obligation to answer any questions on any terms other than your own. So if they start steering you in a direction that you don't want to go in, Steer it back where you want it. Stay on message. Keep it simple and clear. People don't get lost in all kinds of details. You don't want to give them too much. Don't let their questions and comments derail you either. Keep it where you want the conversation going. So another thing with the, with the communications division is marketing the brand. We like to use imagery a lot. Um, so we like we use a logo, use a logo to give a visual branding. Make sure your specific branding is visible on everything: graphics, mailings, emails. Keep it simple and clear. Same with dealing with the media. Stick to one topic per publication. If you have four topics in an email, readers are probably not going to read the whole email. They might read one section of it and then move on. Market to your audience. Provide content that the, they would be interested in. In Ohio, we provide Ohio-related content, sometimes national-related content, 
mostly Ohio. Be distinctive and bold, but always professional and maintain for credibility. I don't know why that didn't show up first. So within the communications division, we do social media. We want to provide proactive and involved social media coverage statewide for the Libertarian Party of Ohio and basically act as a guide for our county affiliates and county development groups to model their own social media coverage after the state. Right now we have coverage on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Reddit. We're looking into expanding our coverage on Google+, maybe Tumblr, and the list goes on. We're, still, we're always seeking new, new social media avenues to get, get our message out, reach more people. Basically, uh, I, I kind of listed here a, a guideline for what we do as far as timing of posts and what the content is. You really need to pay attention to what gets the most attention on each of those avenues. So like on Facebook, you get a lot of attention on photos and memes, news articles and videos. So you want to post more of those. Those may not work so well on Twitter. Sometimes they do. With Twitter, you can do more posts than you can on Facebook. If you do more posts on Facebook, you, would, you might annoy people and they'll unfriend you or unlike you. On Instagram, like Chantel mentioned earlier, it is a new frontier for us. We're excited about it. It seems to be where all the young kids are right now, and so we're trying to reach them, get them involved with photos and memes. And on Reddit, that's an interesting one too, but it's, it's definitely worthwhile looking into. Reddit is the front page of the website, of the, of the uh, World Wide Web. So you wanna make sure that you do have a presence on Reddit. Anything that gets seen on the internet is seen on Reddit. So we have some effective strategies with social media. Uh, we have found that, they, that social media users really like content they can discuss. That's not surprising. News articles and interactive content campaigns tend to do well. We recently did a photo campaign where we said, send us a picture with a page reading why you're voting libertarian at the primary. And that campaign was really successful. We got a lot of likes. We got a lot of new, new people added to who, who we're reaching. Uh, it, it, was, it, was a, it was a great success. So you want to make it interactive for folks. So you want to do also live posting during events. So for example, here we're doing a lot of posts from here with pictures and talking with people and also using, using hashtags. For our state convention, we used hashtag LPO4U. That seemed to work fairly well. This time around for the national convention, we were using hashtag LP2014, hoping that that works. And then you want to brand your social media outlets to your market. So you want to make sure you have the same consistent name for all of them. Facebook and Reddit, we've got the same, Libertarian Party Ohio. And on Instagram and Twitter, LP Ohio. So as I said earlier, emails should be sent the following business day after an event. Wrapping up results, closing thoughts, things like that. You also want to send them for statewide events, other campaigns which require distribution of information. The website front page should be updated in a similar time frame. Uh, the front page story should only show a preview paragraph and then encourage them to read more with a link to read more. That doesn't clutter up the front page with too much. We have a link on our website about getting the latest LPO news. It basically includes a subscription form for folks to give us their email address so that we can add them to our distribution list. And then we get a, an email into our communications division email notifying us to add them to our list. We then take care of it. Which we have news at lpo.org. That's our forwarder. Make sure that that's visible on the website. Again, that you've seen this this slide on Chantel's, all of the same tools are also excellent with communications. Make sure that you are present and visible 
to folks. And then your email forwarders as well. Thank you.